You hear that sloshing? There you go. We could summarize the next few minutes of video by saying this. If you start your vehicle and then you hear a sloshing sound coming from your dashboard area, you most certainly have an air pocket in your coolant system. We could conclude the video by saying, well, just go ahead and bleed the system, burp the coolant, get rid of the air in the system, but I think that will be a little too simplified. In this video, I'd like to go into a little depth to explain why you might have air in your coolant system. It could be as simple as, hey, I replaced my radiator and now I just did not bleed it properly, but then there are other possibilities for why you're getting air in your coolant system despite all your best efforts to burp the coolant and to bleed it properly. This is going to be one of those videos that makes a case for routine maintenance and just buying things every two years or so just because, you know, you want to play it safe. I hope the next, fi um, yeah, it's going to be a long video. I hope the next few minutes or many minutes of video end up to be pretty useful and helpful. In Infinity FX50. In today's video, I'd like to dedicate some time to talk about small issues that could become large issues. And in today's video, we'll be talking about coolant. Uh, yeah, we're inside the car, but we'll be talking about coolant. Uh, a brief explanation of the coolant system, how everything works with everything else. And I'll still take this opportunity, like, like I've always had, to preach the importance of listening to your vehicle, paying attention to your vehicle. That means making sure you listen, you smell, you know, you look at your vehicle, both outside and inside, check under the hood. And um, when I start this car, when I start the car today, I hope uh, that the things I'm trying to catch will translate into the video and you can hear some of the concerns that usually tell me, hey, uh, there is a problem you need to look at. So in today's video, it's gonna be about coolant. All right, and at the end of the video, we'll be talking about the radiator cap. So let's turn the car on. First thing is I want to turn off the music. Make sure audio is off. Okay, audio is off. Great. Yep, it says that. Um, in the, oh, no, wasn't off. Audio is off. Then go to the next stage. I want to turn my AC off. The entire system. Uh, make sure my heated cool seats everything's off great so turn it off and I'm about to start the car now and one thing I want to point out is that the coolant comes in to from the engine bay into the draw into the into the cabin through pipes and all that and you have a heater core the heater core is usually located in the most inconvenient places you have to take out your dashboard to get to the heater core but Let's, let's turn it on, see if this thing carries into the video. Did you hear the sloshing? There's a little bit of a sloshing sound going on. And once the car warms up a little bit, I'll maybe rev the engine so that you can hear that sound. So that sloshing sound, if I were the kind of person to play my radio constantly on, AC, everything just making noise, sometimes that sound can escape you. And what causes that sound? The sound is caused by air, air spaces, air bubbles as people like to call them. So you have air bubbles in your coolant system inside here and then when you start your car the water pump rushes water and if you have a pipe that's fully, you know, f full of water, you probably wouldn't hear it running. But then the the air bubbles in a pipe, that's that's kind of the, the impact that causes noise and then you end up hearing it. We call it gurgling, bur uh, burbling, bubbling, whatever you want to call it. Those sounds do happen and it sounds like it's coming right behind your gauge cluster or somewhere there. So is that a big concern? Not yet. Not quite yet. You have to pay attention to your gauge, uh, to your gauge cluster. My heat, my my coolant engine coolant temperature indicator. The needle never rises. For most of these Nissans, the normal resting level is like a tick below uh, halfway. So I've been, you know, I check I check my gauge cluster. Everything is normal. And let me rev it. Let's see if you if that sound will carry here. 
No, it didn't really do it this time. Okay, so why why are we thinking even talking about coolant in the summer? It's the summer right now. Uh, one, the reason we have a heater core is that your heater core is to carry coolant from the uh, from the engine in here and then when heater blows over the heater core is basically a radiator and when heat is taken away from that little heater core it's blown into the cabin and you get your warmth that system is constantly running even in the summer okay even when you don't need heat in the cabin so to say and sometimes depending on how you you know if you use the auto system sometimes the car plays with both of them and it balances things out to get you your ideal temperature Second thing is that the the heater core can you don't really pipe it off just because you don't need it at some time of the year because of the the precipitate the, uh, the yeah because of the chemicals in your coolant and the heat that goes on if you don't circulate if you don't circulate your system often things will end up precipitating in there hardening and basically blocking your your heater core and then you're going to end up needing to replace it so you it's always running even the only reason you don't get heat is because your your door your mixed doors do not blow um, air over that heater core so you don't get it but did you notice it rolls pretty fast for a car that's not been driven right um yeah so basically Let's put it like this. This is giving me the temperature of the system, right? And because I've got quite a good amount of air in my system, I I, I will tend my, the temperature will tend to rise. It's pretty much the same, but I'm likely to end up boiling my system if I don't pay attention. Let's jump into the engine band. I'll show you what what that looks like what that innocuous sound the gurgling behind your steering wheel behind your gauge cluster let's see what that translates to in the engine bay under the hood let's take a closer look so some of the key things i'd like you to know are that one this is your main radiator cap you have an reservoir over here coolant reservoir you have a bleeder valve back there i think we'll take this off so you can see it better so I can show things better oh that's nice and easy yes it's been exercised a lot okay great so let's cover this again radiator cap coolant reservoir over here bleeder valve those are the main things we'll be talking about and touching today and one thing I want you to notice is that whenever you have the sloshing going on you very likely have something like this Look at the level over here. In this coolant reservoir, this is the max level, this is the minimum level, and usually, ideally, you want your coolant to dance somewhere uh, between the two marks. Mine is really high, and I'm glad I'm watching it, because if I weren't watching it, it is very possible that the coolant will rise so high and end up dumping. You have a pipe down here, you have a hose down here, which ends up basically it's an overflow tube okay so I'm gonna go ahead turn off the car so we can talk quite clearly and then I'll explain some of the key components and why everything is important at this point you'll notice that on the engine coolant temperature gauge the stick is barely at the halfway point we'll keep that in mind as I said it has not overheated at all Okay, great. Okay, let's talk about these things and what they do. So, you have so much coolant in your car right now. In your, you know, engine, the hoses, the heater core, the radiator, which is, you know, below this intake cowl. You have so much coolant in there. And the purpose of coolant is that it's supposed to take away heat that comes into the, that comes from the, you know, the combustion process, right? So that heat, send it to the, into the coolant, and the coolant basically comes in here and it's taken the, the coolant loses that heat through the radiator and also as i mentioned inside there when you lose it into the cabin heater core but this is the main part that you're supposed to lose heat from okay that's very important second thing is that the engine the metal parts get so hot and you need to find a way to prevent 
that water from boiling because when you have the coolant basically the liquid from boiling because when it boils one or two things happens one or two things happen one the stuff turns the water in your coolant right will turn into steam and steam is pretty dangerous steam and metal it's going to basically eat holes into many different things and then the second thing is that steam is not a good does not have very good heat capacity compared to the way liquid water can do it right so you want something that's a real acting heat sink and water does a better job than sink than than steam in this case so when you have a fixed volume like this one for the most part coolant in your car is the coolant system is closed it's a closed system for the most part we'll talk about this in a little bit talking about water and steam um generally boiling happens at you know standardizing for everything else 212 degrees fahrenheit 100 degrees celsius which is also centigrade right so if you were to boil water at you know uh sea level and everything else being equal at 100 degrees celsius water is going to stop boiling okay but there's something about liquid systems whenever you have a fixed volume and you increase the pressure in the system the boiling point is going to go higher what that means is that if i increase the pressure of my system my coolant system at 100 degrees celsius and 212 degrees fahrenheit my water is not going to boil off it's going to remain liquid okay and that is the main reason this radiator cap exists it has a certain pressure it's spring loaded well we're going to kind of wait a little bit because it got to temperature we'll have to let it wait and it's one of those reasons if i try to open this right now i'll probably get steam just spraying out although i can almost bet that whenever i open this you'll find that the coolant level is at least not here it might be here might be even lower but it's not here but what happens is that it's got a sudden amount of pressure and when you open you increase the pressure by you know you basically relieve the pressure which in one way you could look at it as increasing the volume and bam the water that's in this is just going to flash off basically turn into steam and spray out because then it's going to boil okay so i already pointed out that right here coolant had risen above my max level right and so i mentioned that there is a caveat to coolant being a closed system this thing is spring loaded it's got a spring in there and a plunger and the plunger goes in there to keep coolant basically away from here away from the neck so that whatever coolant you got runs down here into the radiator and back into the engine right it just does its cycle but at some point when you increase the pressure right so you have a fixed volume volume it's just fixed pressure you kind of have a set pressure this thing is supposed to have a sticker on here and i'll get you another one to, to show like this this sticker right here it says 137 kpa so you have a fixed pressure you have a fixed volume but you're increasing temperature at some point something's got to give volume is not going to change the volume is whatever it is right your hoses are not going to get really much larger however pressure goes up and then when you increase the pressure beyond 137 kilopascals this spring right here this spring i'm trying to show it ends up opening so the spring opens up at 137 kilopascals right and then when that spring opens this plunger basically goes up this plunger goes up and it allows water to flow or coolant to flow into this overflow tube okay so this overflow tube goes in feeds the reservoir from the bottom right here and then it rises but then what's supposed to happen is this this thing is an airtight seal it should be airtight so that when everything cools down when your engine cools down and you have water in there it starts contracting right and what that does it it pulls from this side right here so whenever you have excess coolant here and a good radiator cap it's supposed to pull it backwards into your system I hope you kind of following so far so that's what's not happening it is either the pressure is good and the the airtight seal is bad or the spring is just bad in itself
if the spring were bad in itself that would be a larger issue because whenever I came here and this thing was running it would have been boiling and when it's boiling man you know you start worrying I'm you know am I overheating or my head gaskets bad what, what exactly is going on thankfully we don't have that problem I just think that my airtight seal is bad as I said this one right here but I didn't see any signs of coolant leaking from from this part right here so I'm gonna let it cool for a little bit and when it cools down I will open it and once I open it um, the two ways to do it one you could get a uh, radiator cap tester test the pressure see if it opens up at the right uh, temperature at the right pressure sorry if it still holds up to and when you get the um, pressure tester in this case 137 kPa is like 19 somewhere between 19 and 20 psi and you know just see if it holds I think it's gonna pass on that part I think it's gonna hold pressure I just think that the air seal isn't working the way it's supposed to so you might have noticed that this does not look brand new you would be correct it is not brand new I actually borrowed it from my m56 over there they use the same spec the same radiator cap and one thing with Nissan's don't even play with the aftermarket always go for OEM Right. I've just learned when it comes to Nissan's and the systems, coolant systems, they don't like anything else. Thermosets, radiator caps, I guess you could buy any radiator really. So that's going to be the second part of the video. I'll be replacing the radiator cap and then bleeding because we still have air in the system, right? We need to find a way to reduce the coolant that's in there, have it where I'd like it to be, and two, bleed the the air that's in the system so that's why we'll be touching on that part right there okay so let's let it cool down and i'll come back open this up and we'll see what happens you know matter of fact i'm feeling kind of bold so let's see what happens here push it down should probably have a rag or something a rag would do better but what i'm going to do is open it in two stages one just turn it like 45 degrees There you go. It's a boiling I was talking about. There was a lot of air in the system. Did you hear that come out? Okay, so I'm going to turn it back. Let it cool down a little more. And then I'll come back and open it up. Let's see what the reservoir is doing meanwhile. It's still there, same spot. Nothing's really happening. While that's cooling down, I'll go ahead and remove this intake scoop because part of this process is going to be I'd like to lift the reservoir. So let's do this. Ten millimeter. Okay, now I'm gonna try this again. See, hopefully it's cooled down significantly. I'm just turning it 45 degrees, like this. Oh, can't show you and be safe at the same time. So, take my word for it. There you go. Okay, so seems like we're mostly okay. Open it all the way. Okay, doesn't look too horrible. Put it to the side. One sign of it being old, I know this is a Nissan OEM cap, it just looks like them, generally. But the fact that the um, the seal is gone, usually, rather the sticker is gone, usually just makes me know or makes me think that it's really old because you expect some sort of a sticker there. So, as I said, I, don't, I know this one's not brand new, but at least I know it works and I'll install it. Something else that I'd like to point out is that my prediction that the coolant level was going to be so low is pretty wrong in this case because the coolant is right here not too far down okay 
But what that tells me is that I still have quite a good air pocket somewhere. And what I'm going to do is go back there and open that bleeder valve. And let's see what comes out. Wasn't that tight. You might hear some gurgling, so listen out. Okay, so this one hissed. No fluid came out. And on the other side, this one gurgled and barked and popped. And what do you know? Now there's no coolant over here. All the coolant is now taking space. Now this next part is kind of important. It is very important actually. The bleeding process. How do you uh, bleed one of these VK engines? Generally, it's very, I think these are some of the easiest Nissan engines to bleed, you know, of air in the coolant system. Open the bleeder in the back, open this one here and get some coolant. And if you check this out, my car is level, no ramps, no jacks, nothing. The front is just level. and. Generally, I would be pouring in new coolant, but not only trying to be cheap, but I know I have coolant in here. I'm going to use this coolant. That's why I bolted it from the from the radiator. So I'm going to lift it up, and um, we'll let. Oh, I need to release this one right here. I don't know how far it goes down there, but instead of dinking with it down there, how about I just remove it here? perfect because it was holding me down <laughs> lift it up and what I'm gonna do is just watch I can feel it in my hands it's sucking coolant from here and the coolant is going there because now the level of coolant is higher than there look at that it's not really siphoning it's and then I'm keeping an eye on the back as well making sure that one, it doesn't spill out of there, but two, if it spills out of there, it's letting me know that, hey, we're full now. So, this is how you uh, bleed coolant, bleed air from the coolant system. Feed it in slowly, slowly. And usually, sometimes people run into problems because you get your jug of coolant and you just try to drown this thing. Oh, there you go. There you go. Did you see it come out? There. So that means we are done, pretty much. What I'm going to do at this point is come here, put the cap back on here, close it off. I do my bleeds like everything all closed up, or rather the engine shut off and everything else. You could have it running. The old school way was to have your car running, crank the heater in there, because again, remember the heater core, right? Crank it up in there and have your nose in the air, add coolant until then have someone revving your engine as well. And when you just feel like sometimes you'd hear just, you'd see it pop, basically one big burp. And two, you'd get the heat in your, in your heater core running really hot. That's how you'd know that you were done. But I mean, 2021, man, with better systems are doing these. So, you'll notice that the coolant level hasn't really gone down too much. I, I guess I could have marked it with a, you know, with masking tape or something. But, this is going to be magical. Trust me. So, <clears throat> this is a low level right now. Let me try to add coolant as much as possible. And it's rising up because, I mean, it's had enough coolant basically. I like to call this the no fuss method. What I'm going to do is put a good cap and then we'll progress into the car. Alright, so the coolant cap, the radiator cap is back on nice and secure. I better make sure this one is secure as well because I'd hate for this thing to pop. Not too tight now, you don't want to break that plastic bit. We're going to start the car again. It might or might not have that gurgling sound from uh, behind the gauge cluster, but we're going to keep an eye on the 
coolant level or rather the engine coolant temperature gauge Let's start it well no sloshing I'll take that jump right onto temperature so what I'm gonna do is this rev it a few times they usually say rev it to like 3000 especially if it's right at temperature I wish I had my OBD reader right now so you want it to get to temperature you want the the thermostat to open up so that it's flowing through the radiator and then you want to rev it a few times well does someone say 3000 something kind of funky turn on my heat well AC off crank it up to well I turned everything off didn't I mode then turn it all the way to max fan I don't want the AC I just want the fan Although it is summer, I'm trying to feel, make sure that it's blowing, you know, as hot as possible. It's not quite there. The heater core is not very hot. I can feel it right now. It's not as hot as I expect it to be. Surprisingly, it never really gave me any problems in the, in the winter. But then, I usually set it to a conservative, like, 73 degrees and just roll with it. And if I had my temperature sensor, like an, my IR gun, you'd notice that right now it's a certain temperature, but once I rev it, it gets hotter. <laughs> it does, really. <laughs> so you want to rev it a few times till it retains that heat. You know, the neighbors love me. <laughs> it's nice and hot right now. Let's go outside and let's take a look at that. Look at the level. Make sure nothing's bubbling too crazy. Nothing's overflowing. It's not spitting. It's not showing up over here. Um, this one's not leaking either. Everything's good. Well, it dripped earlier, but it's not leaking right now. That's good. Look at this one here. No leaks either. Usually when you have the sticker you can see if it leaked off to the side off the side. Well, maybe maybe I'll get some masking tape, set it down here and then just keep an eye on it and see what happens. Does it go higher or lower? Alright, let's mark our new level. Right right there. Seems like it's gone down a little bit. Okay, pretty much there. I'm going to go inside and rev the engine a little bit, then let, you know, just have the camera rolling in here, see if anything changes. So I've revved it a little bit and remember that other part I told you that if you have an, a good radiator cap it's supposed to pull basically with vacuum it's supposed to pull from the reservoir this is that part I'm gonna let the camera keep rolling and 
we might end up doing it as a time lapse basically come back to it later and see if this purportedly good radiator cap allows the system to pull a vacuum and thus suck in coolant from here well if not it's just going to be a i guess a process that will allow me to like bleed it again i'm still going to try to bleed it again usually you have to bleed you need to do like three times to get it to catch just right but for now camera is just going to be rolling to see if the if the volume in there changes you know to see if anything falls below that level right there okay that's it till later so um i'm getting a little impatient i think it's been like 12 or so minutes it hasn't gone down at least not in any significant way so i'm gonna do this test a different way i'm it's just a twist to it really what i'm gonna do is do exactly what i did first Me, meaning i'm gonna open this up to vent it just a little bit And what that does is that it's going to allow any gas to escape. Has it happened? Yeah. And although you're not going to see a time lapse of this going down, right? Going down the way intended to. You will see a time lapse of it going down in that after I do this and add coolant over here you'll see the level fall below what it is at this moment. So I'm gonna go back there and open up the vent. You guys remember the bleeder, the vent? And basically repeat the process you saw me do in the beginning, which is gonna be, open the vent back here, you might hear some gurgling, listen out. Okay, no burping this time. I guess it's nice and full back here. No air to escape. But this part is actually pretty low right here. So I'm gonna take this coolant, lift it up to add it into the neck filler neck. I'm losing quite a good amount of it. Okay. Still not there yet. We're, we're gonna get there. Put the cap back on. Then I'm gonna go ahead and start the car again and by the end of the process, I know you can see the min and max level over there. By the end of all this process, at best, the, the coolant should be at the max level right here. Because it's hot, it's expanded, there's pressure in the system. This is where I expect it to be. Okay? And then, I'm hoping I'll be able to get all this covered and shown to you guys in today's video. But if not, well, um... I'll have to come back tomorrow and show you what it looks like after another day of commute, okay? Alright, for now I'm going to go inside, start the car, and then we'll just watch what happens. As you can see, it's maybe equidistant between the max line and this marker that I put in there. Just a little above, halfway in between, so maybe that'll show you something. Uh, actually, no, I'm not yet done. Because it did not spill from the back, so... It did not give me my indicator. Yeah. Nice catch. Because <laughs> it did not spill at all from that bleeder in the back. There you go. Just came up now. on ok 
Okay. And we're gonna run it. I added a little bit of a challenge to the mix. Well, not really a challenge. I turned the AC on, and turning the AC on basically for, uh, forces this fan to come on. And if this fan is running, then that fan is running as well. So the reason I'm doing that is I'm forcing the fans to cool down. That's, that's pretty much it. Then I'm gonna run it for a little while, and then we'll take a look again. See, now I notice a little bit of wetness over here. I can't remember if I did that or if, it, if it's bubbling by itself. Seems okay so far. But now that I've noticed it, I've wiped it dry, I'm gonna rev the engine again and see what happens. Okay, I just turned the fan off, um, the, cool, the AC system, so the fans are turned off. But otherwise, it's still blowing in there like crazy. So, I'd like to see what that does to the system. We've seen where the coolant has gotten to, to its new normal level, right? So we'll let this sit, let it cool down again, come here, open that cap. By the way, it's dry, so I guess I just spilled something on top of it. Uh, then see what happens. Yeah, it, it might take a little bit of a process, but you know what, in my opinion, this system is a little better than the funnel method because the funnel method requires you to open the pressurized system and run the funnel, and then two, you might be doing it for like three hours. Nah, not a fan of that. You guys, I don't know if you're gonna believe me or not, but take it from me, I did not do anything to the car and I regret having stopped recording at this point because I I didn't know how fast it was going to happen and I got a little bored so I didn't record this but without doing anything else the level fell from here halfway all the way down so now what I'm gonna check is go ahead and open this up hasn't hissed it burped a little bit. I wonder what happened here when it burped. It's right below, it's like right at the max line right now. But I'm gonna do the same process, go all the way with it. I'll open the back again. Maybe this time I should grab the camera so you can see what I'm doing. No burps, hisses, gurgles. And when you look inside there, it is kind of low, not too bad though. So again, we'll do the dance again. Lift this up, fill this neck while watching back there. I'm having to lift the reservoir a lot higher this time. I think I gave it quite a good amount of time to cool down. Keeping an eye on both sides. Wow. Still going. Must have been one heck of a, an air bubble almost draining this. Wow. 
finally, there you go. That was really low. <laughs> okay, so I think right now I'm fairly confident that if there was any air bubble over here, it's been worked out. What I'm going to do is put this plug back in. Tighten it. You don't have to like tighten the snacks out of it. It's I'm sure there's a torque value, but usually that's good enough for me. And then, now when you look at that, you realize that it is low. It is below minimum now. Look at that. Well, can't see it from here. It is below minimum, so I'm going to get some coolant and add it in there. Is this a big deal? Kind of, sort of. Remember I told you that when it creates a vacuum, it sucks from, it sucks uh, basically the coolant that's in the reservoir. So if your coolant ends up running dry in here and your system creates a vacuum and sucks in, you're going to end up just sucking air and then you'll still have that air pocket and you'll run into the same problems that have led us to making this video today. So what I'm going to do is add some coolant here. This is, this is not final per se. This is something that I'm doing. I'll be... If I were doing this, I guess, when I come back to do it 100% securely, I will get a brand new radiator cap. That's the one thing I'll do. And two, I'm going to flush the entire system. And then three, see that plastic bit over there? I would replace it with a metal one. So those are things that I'll do and I'll address in a future video. But for now, I just wanted to show you the, troubles, uh, the troubleshooting sequence whenever you have sloshing sounds under your dashboard whenever you start the car. I hope this video will has been helpful to you and uh, for me I'll put everything back in, add some coolant, not all the way to max, just halfway between min and max and usually that um, the calculation works out well enough that when your car is hot it's gonna rise up to max but when it is cool it's gonna rise it's gonna um, lower itself all the way to just basically halfway it never has to touch men but if it's touching men what I usually do is just add a little bit get it to the halfway point and then see what happens so we'll keep an eye on this this is not the end of it as I said I usually come and check my vehicles every every week at best you know at minimum sometimes more often than that especially knowing that I've got this going on that means I'll be looking at it every day just to see what happens at the beginning of our of the trip I'll see where it's gotten to tomorrow morning and then after driving I'll look at it again and see where it's gotten to okay that's it and I think we're done with the video catch you guys later